Okay, so for the second half, we are going to um, place a roof on our house. Cool. And then we're actually going to start looking at the site a little bit <laughs> uh, and start our sort of rough layout of the, um, the boundaries for the property and then start uh, placing some of the rough shapes that will uh, eventually become our future design. So let's start with the roof. Um, Vectorworks, just like doors and windows, uh, has a tool that will create a roof for you. All you have to do is tell what walls you want to put a roof on, and it will put it on there for you. Of course, there's a lot of variables um, that you can tweak and change, you know, the pitch of the roof, the type of roof, uh, all that good stuff. Um, we're not going to monkey too deep into the weeds on that one. Um, we're going to take a quick look at it, set up a roof for our own house, um, show you some small ways to tweak things, but other than that, again, we mainly just want to have something that represents a house that looks somewhat similar. We're not usually going to spend a whole lot of time um, tweaking these settings because uh, we really want to focus on the, uh, the landscape. Um, so first things first, uh, it's one of those where we want to make sure, actually make sure if there we have to go to a class real quick. I think this one will actually create the class for you. Um, yes, we're good, okay. So let's all make sure that we are on the top plan view um, for our screen. So we should have the tan floor, the gray walls, and again, of course, just say top plan. To follow along with the book, we're going to go ahead and jump into the none class. So in the navigation window, scroll down until you see none and double click on it. What page are you on the book? Uh, right now, we are at none? page 80. There's a nun? There is a nun class. That's one of those default there. classes that is created automatically by Effectorworks in every file. We're just going to double click on that. Um, the book does that. I don't know that it's necessary because, again, when we create or have Vectorworks create this roof, it's going to create or fall in its own class by default. But we'll follow the book on this one. Um, next, we're going to go back to the Select Similar tool. Well, we so, have another window on the hmm? There's like an extra window on there. Okay. Oh, I was just playing. Oh. Yeah. So at this point, you can add as many windows as you want, <laughs> just to practice. Um, okay, so Select Similar should be the uh, tool we're in for the basic tool palette. Uh, again, we're going to select the walls of the house, because we have to tell Vectorworks which walls we want to have a roof on. So we want all the walls, so we'll just use the select similar to click on one of the walls of the house, and it should then, in the object info, tell you that it gets all six, or maybe seven, of those walls. Actually, Holly, do you still have seven walls? No, it's in door and wall. Oh, well, uh, have you selected the walls? It actually gave me them all. Oh, 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 sorry. You got what, I think you got the door instead of the walls. Oh. There we go. Um, so you have an extra wall somewhere we know about? So this could That's be interesting. I'm not sure how your roof is going to work out. This could, be, this could be pretty cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've, defined, we've defined the walls we want to use. Um, after we've done that, uh, all we need to do is go up to Landmark. That's the uh, Landmark menu at the top of the screen and then down to architectural. This is the same place we selected floor before when we were creating our floor. Um, but for this one, we want to go to create roof. Mm. And you should get a new window, create roof window. So graphically, this kind of tells you or points out a lot of the bits and pieces that you can define. So the numbers refer to the different options here. Um, we're just going to uh, set a few of these. So the first one is the Eve profile. Uh, we want to make sure that it is set to vertical. So if you saw the change at all, it changed the form of this Eve, so it's a very simple form. Again, that's probably as detailed as we need to get. Um, for the Eve overhang, that is number eight. That's this distance from the wall of the house to the edge of the, of the roof. 
we want to make sure that is set to one foot, which mine is already set to. Uh, and then all of the other options we're going to leave as is. Um, but you'll see here, before we jump on that, um, by default it's going, to, it's going to land in the current layer, that is our survey layer. It's going to be in the default class of roof main. Um, those are two good points to point out. And then we can click OK. This was under it was under landscape, architectural. The red. Landmark. Me. Wow. Mine's red. And then. Sunshine yellow. Oh, okay. Great roof. Okay. Did everybody get a roof? Yeah, neat. Cool. Um, real quick, so what you're seeing is, of course, the outside perimeter of the roof. You're also seeing the ridges uh, for the roof. Um, this is just Vectorworks taking the outside area taking the pitch that we had defined in, um, or that was defined by default in that previous window we were just in, and creating those ridge lines based on those two parameters. Um, if we had made it steeper, you know, these ridges would be higher and this line would be longer, essentially. Um, if we had made it lower, maybe it would come and meet at a point, who knows. Um, you could continue to tweak that if you have a particular appearance for the house that you want. Um, if you want to switch from I always get these confused, which is which. The gable versus the, uh, I don't even know what they're called yep. anymore. Yep. Let's see here. Eve versus gable versus hip roof. Um, you can do that per essentially roof um, face. So if at this point um, you go to the selection tool, so you can just hit the X key on your keyboard or go to the selection tool and again, with the selection tool, if you're in the first option, it usually just selects the object and lets you move it around. But if you're in the second option, oftentimes you'll get um, some level of modification to the object you've selected. Um, in this case, if you select a roof with that option selected, you get these blue grips. And again, that's at each face of the roof. Let's click on the blue grip that's up at the top of that uh, sort of short extension of the house. By simply clicking on it, you get the roof settings window that pops up. Here you can decide if you want it to be an E roof, which I guess is the one that has the sloping to the face of the roof. Um, and Or you can select the gable, which would essentially take that slope out and it would just come straight out to the edge of the roof. Um, so let's go ahead and actually make that in a gable. You could again also tweak any of the other settings here if you wish, but we're just going to leave it at that and click OK. And after you click OK, you should see that the ridge line now goes all the way to the edge of the house and that little sloped face um, is eliminated. So you'll see that when we jump into 3D that that will now be the one face of the roof that will differ from the others. So let's go ahead and jump to 3D. Frame, you can see obviously the outline of the house and the new roof. Um, and then if you go up to the tea kettle, go to OpenGL. Boom. OpenGL. Okay, so you see that um, we have a nice brick house and sort of a weird white roof. Um, we could probably do better than that. So uh, let's see what's going on in the class that is causing this white roof to appear instead of a shingled roof. Um, so that was, uh, let's see here, roof main is the class we want to go to and right click to go to edit. We're going to go to the roof main class in the uh, navigation palette. And when you find that, just do a right click and go to edit. Use a screen. Mm -hmm. So, a few things here. You'll see that 
uh, by default, or you know, when we got the file, the 3D textures were not turned on for this class. So we have a 3D object, but the textures are not turned on so that it's not pulling any of that graphic information from the class in this case. Instead, it is just defaulting to the 2D color fill oh. that was set up already. So um, let's focus on the 3D textures. First thing we should do is turn them on. <laughs> so simply by clicking on the check mark next to use textures, surface hatches at creation. That should help. Um, I mentioned that we have the three options here for walls, roofs, and other. Um, which one do you think we want to set here? I mm know. -hmm. Oh, <laughs> roofs. Okay. We'll start there at least. We'll see. Um, so here we have the option for the top texture, which is the top roof portion, and then also for the dormers. So it would be like, bless you. Um, I believe the dormers refers to like the face that we created when we made that gable and eave roof. I, yeah, probably got that backwards, but anyway, I'm terrible with roofs. Um, so right now, if we click on the top texture and the dormer texture, um, we'll see that they're set at a brick running bottom, which is not probably appropriate. All we have to do to change that, let's start with the top texture, is click on that um, texture and all of these options pop up. Let's see, to follow the book, um, we should find shingle, wood, or regular. Feel free to select whatever you like, though. But the shingle, wood, or regular is the one that uh, for both? we're looking for. For both or just the one? Um, let's see here. Probably for both. Roofing shake, shingle wood, or regular it is. Yeah. And after you've selected shingle wood or regular for the for one of these options, when you go back for the second, um, you should find it in this top section of uh, textures because we've already used it. So now shingle wood or regular is right there as well. Mm -hmm. It's a little quicker. And do we use it as creation or just leave it? We do. Oh, shoot. So use texture surface hatches at creation. So essentially, this line is sort of the parent or the top setting to say, to tell Vectorworks, look for the textures in the class to wrap the object. But then we have this second layer of turning things on and off to fine tune um, what, we, what exactly we want to see. So after that, we should have, again, use texture, surface hatches at creation. There should be a check. Should we have, should we have a check on the one at the top where it says use at creation? Yes. Oh, sure. That's always a good um, habit to get into when you're creating classes. Uh, the roofs should have the shingle wood irregular. The walls we're not concerned with because we're not really dealing with walls. Others, again, right now it's it's a brick arrow. We could turn that off if yours is on. Turn it off? Only then the other one. How so you turn it off? under others, simply by unchecking it. Oh. Okay. Now go back to rooms, so it should still be up. Correct. Like magic. Alrighty. If you've got that, let's click OK. Do you want to set all the objects in the class? I've already been created to use it. What do we think? Yes. Yes to all. Now, I still have a silly yellow line. Orange one. So did everyone get a shingle roof? I have a silly orange one. That's just because it's highlighted, so it's silly. Uh, you click anywhere else, and then oh. click in the blue. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. OK. Did you pick the shape? <laughs> okay, so now we have a roof. Um, there's a few more little steps in the book that I'm going to just kind of pass over, but mm -hmm. you can dig in a little deeper uh, this week. Um, you can fine tune like the material that is on that roof. 
wall right there, um, among other things. So you could spend a little time on that. But for us, we're going to continue on. Let's see here. Okay. So we have our roof, we have our walls, we have some windows and doors. Um, next up, we are going to locate the uh, at least the rear um, boundary for our property so that we can actually start laying this out. And we're going to use the triangle tool to place those locations because we have two measurements from different corners of the buildings to those two points that we need. So we're going to use the triangle tool to get to those points. First things first, let's go to uh, back to the top plan view. So up at the top of the screen, click on the custom view, pull down, and select top plan. Okay, first thing we wanna do is actually turn off that roof, because the roof has a foot or so overhang. So we're gonna be working up at the edge of the house, so visually it's just gonna um, block areas that we need to actually see. So uh, in the navigation palette, go ahead and find roof main. And next to the eyeball under visibility, select the uh, the oh. next column over, so just you to the to right of the eye. Off Pardon? Mine is on highlights, so I have to highlight some things. Oh, yes. Okay. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. We now want to make another class, uh, the active class, and that is under survey. And we're going to select triangulation lines. So go ahead and double click on the survey triangulation lines. Your roof didn't? No, it says that it's in roof main. And I turned off the roof main. But it also says that it's 